good moment. Mike Outlaw, the rookie sensation, only six months in the wrestling business, wins the Dynamo Pro Heavyweight Championship in Fenton, Missouri back in December. And the crowd exploded with applause and admiration. And a lot of Mike Outlaw's fellow wrestlers came storming out of the locker room to hoist him up on their shoulders with smiles on their faces as they congratulated him. It would bring a tear to a glass eye, wouldn't it? Mike Outlaw, a working class young man who's worked hard, he's trained hard, he's put in the road work, he's been dedicated, and I guess a lot of people thought that that proved that if you just work hard and stick to it, that's all you really need to do in life. You too can be a success. Practically a Christmas miracle, I suppose. What you may not be aware of is that all of those wrestlers that came storming into the ring to congratulate you, they all had smiles on their faces. All those wrestlers came out of one locker room. There's another locker room there in the back, and nobody in that other locker room came out to came out to congratulate you. That's the locker room that I was in and a lot of other wrestlers are in. Wrestlers who are not so friendly with you. Wrestlers who, if I might use the colloquial term, wrestlers who uh, reside in the bad guy locker room, if you want to use that term. You might wonder how those of us in the bad guy locker room reacted to your championship victory. Well, Mike, you might be surprised to find out that in the bad guy locker room, we were all smiles as well. Oh yes, we all had smiles on our faces from ear to ear. Now no, it, it was nothing about us uh, you know, being proud of your success. It wasn't because we suddenly discovered some degree of humanity or any other such garbage. Oh no. The reason that we had smiles on our faces in our locker room was one of pragmatism. Because we all instantly realized what an opportunity this was for each and every one of us. When you got the three count, when you won the match, when you got handed that belt, everybody in our locker room suddenly felt like a pack of vultures flying over a wounded animal. Just waiting for the right time to strike, and the only question was which one of us would get to you first. You see, Mike Outlaw, you are a very impressive athlete. I'm taking nothing away from you in that regard. You had to wrestle the perfect match to win the Dynamo Pro Heavyweight Championship, which, to your credit, you did. But in order to hold on to that championship, you are going to have to wrestle the perfect match each and every night here on out. But it's so much more than that. Because at your level of experience, or inexperience, I might say, you might not realize that Winning a championship and holding on to a championship and being on the top rung in any promotion takes a lot more than just wrestling the perfect match every night. There's a lot more to it. You see, you have to have the experience to be able to manipulate contracts, manipulate promoters, manipulate referees, manipulate your fellow wrestlers. Oh, there's a whole cadre of dark arts that are a requirement to get on top and stay on top in professional wrestling. And you, sir, as impressive as you are, there's no way that someone with six months experience can have that skill set. But my lawyers did their job. They got to the championship committee first. And so the first title shot goes to my man, Iron Man Ken Costa, the crown jewel of the Travis Cook organization. And all you have to do, Mike Outlaw, is look at the record books. Look at our past. Everywhere we've gone, Ken Costa and myself have dominated. We've been on top. We've controlled the scene. And why? Because we know how to manipulate contracts. We know how to manipulate promoters. We know how to manipulate referees. And we darn sure know how to manipulate every single wrestler in every promotion we've ever been in. We are, quite frankly, the straw that stirs the drink everywhere we go. Nobody operates on the level that we do. And January 3rd in Fenton, Missouri, at the Stratford Bar and Grill, the site of your biggest achievement, you have to deal with somebody who has a lot more experience than you, someone who is used to these championship matches, someone who dominates in championship matches, someone who understands the psychological element, the mental element 
of being on top of professional wrestling, the side of your greatest success, Mike Outlaw, will also be the side of your Waterloo. Now, Mike, I understand that the fans out there of Dynamo Pro Wrestling, they look at you as some kind of working class hero. As, you know, the, the embodiment of the little guy. The embodiment of the guy who punches a time clock every day, brings a lunch pail, works hard, and strives for success because, by God, you did it. What people like that don't realize, or they don't want to realize, is that the great thing about America is that while working class people like you have the opportunity to get some degree of success, at the end of the day, the people who have long-term success in this nation are those who are well-educated, who are intelligent, who are well-connected, who are unscrupulous, and who will do absolutely anything to win. In other words, people like Travis Cook and Iron Man Ken Casa. Whether it's professional wrestling or any other avenue of life, when you get to the top level, there are no scruples. There are no conventions. There is no right and wrong. There are no rules. Now, I don't think you've learned that yet, but you're fixing to find out on January 3rd. Because it's people like Ken Casa and Travis Cook, the well-connected, the intelligent, the educated, the unscrupulous, who will send to their rightful place on top of Dynamo Pro Wrestling just as we always rise to our rightful place in American society. See you on January the 3rd, champ. I can't